climbed to the highest mountain, looked all around, couldn't find nobody. Went down into the deepest valley, looked all around out there, couldn't find nobody. Looked across the deep blue sea, couldn't find one to come. To your grace, your love, your mercy. Nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Clap your hands. Nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Oh, 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 oh. One more time, one more time. We back at the top. Here we go. Y'all sing. I climbed to the highest mountain. See y'all. Look all around. Y'all better sing. All around down there could win across the win across couldn't y'all better see to your grace, your love, your mercy.
Nobody greater than Nobody great Nobody greater than Y'all turn your worship up one more time Come on A church star Lord Church star Lord Couldn't find nobody Look high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody great. Nobody great. Nobody great. Let's go. Nobody, nobody great. greater than. Good evening and welcome to Virginia First, the historic jurisdiction of Virginia number one workers meeting, our 102nd workers meeting. We want to welcome you guys in. Come on in. We are getting ready to have a high time in the Lord. We have made it to Friday and we are so excited about what God is doing in our workers meeting. Have you invited a friend? Have you liked? Have you shared yet? Now is the time to go ahead and get that done so that you can continue to spread the word of God abroad to all of your friends on Facebook, on YouTube, and anywhere else that you are watching us tonight. We welcome you all to be with us, our virtual audience, for a wonderful time in the Lord. The mothers are in there praying, and if you know anything about a praying mother, you know that God hears their prayers. Can I get an amen? Tell me where you're watching us from. Put it in the chat. Where you're watching from, if you're watching from another jurisdiction, if you're watching from another state, we want to know who's with us tonight so that we can keep you lifted up in prayer. Again, we want to welcome you all here with us on tonight. Let me give you a quick synopsis of what happened this week. On Wednesday, we started this wonderful workers meeting and none other than Superintendent Kelsey D. Little Sr. was our speaker. And I'm a little biased, I'm not going to lie. He is my superintendent and my cousin and my big brother. And I thank God for the man of God that delivered a powerful word from on high. He talked to us about the oil chose me. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that God chooses us, that we're not dictated by what man wants. We're not done by what man is going on, but God, the oil chose us me and the oil chose you and i'm so excited about that go back and watch it if you didn't see it it's on our facebook channel for you to see all the wonderful messages and then on thursday i want to pause for a quick second because our bishop none other than the honorable Bishop Mark Thomas Sr. loves the people of God. Not only does he make sure we have a wonderful conference filled with wonderful speakers, but he makes sure that we leave here equipped, ready to be workers in our local church, workers in our district and abroad, and of course, workers within our jurisdiction. So on Thursday, we had workshops, iron sharpening iron workshops that were geared towards empowering the local church and the workers to ensure that they knew what was going on. We talked about social media. We talked about how to do PowerPoints for presentations. We talked about other awesome things to ensure that our churches were fully equipped to continue to spread the gospel abroad here, there, and everywhere. And then on Thursday night, oh, if y'all were not here Thursday night, you missed two speakers because 
the inspirational speaker? Oh, mother got us all the way together. She told us about heaven or hell. She told us how wives are supposed to treat their husbands and support their men. I'm telling you, if you need to get put together real quick, go check out that inspirational message by mother. She's going to gather you together, put a bow on it, give you a kiss, and send you on your way with love like only a good godly mother can do. Can I get an amen? Go ahead and type amen in the chat for me because you know I'm telling the truth if you don't know. And then that night we had an awesome speaker that came forth and reminded us again, just confirmation from Wednesday night, that you are good enough. You're good enough, saints. And I'm so glad that we have so many awesome speakers. We have awesome workshops and we are blessed here at Virginia number one. Before I go into all the great things that happened today, that's happening tonight, and that'll be happening the rest of the week, let me pause and give honor to our bishop. I've already said his name, and I know y'all already know who he is, but I give great honor to our bishop, the one, the only, the preacher machine himself, Bishop Mark A. Thomas Sr. He is one of a kind. He, I tell y'all this all the time. He can preach you happy in 10 minutes flat. He can give you a message with good, solid foundation and the word to send you on your way and bless you for the days and weeks to come. He is a leader of man. He is a leader that we can follow into the next dimension as he continues to lead our jurisdiction to the next place. He is a blessing to the body of Christ. And I know that I can speak for all of Virginia number one, the historic jurisdiction when I say we love our bishop. And if you're watching your Virginia number one, go ahead and type it in the chat. We love our bishop so that he knows that his people are watching and we are here as well to support him. And we know beside every great man is a wonderful anointed woman and our first lady, the fragrance of Virginia number one, the crown jewel of Virginia number one, the songbird of Virginia number one, the rose of Virginia number one. I can go on and on telling you all the different things that our beautiful first lady is, but I give honor to none other than our first lady, Naomi Kim Thomas, who is an amazing powerhouse in her own right. She is anointed, she can sing, she can preach, she can dress, she can encourage, she gives you a hug that makes you feel you wrapped up in the sun. And I thank God for our first lady on this evening. And we honored her on Thursday, letting her know how much we love her. Because you wanna know what? Love is an action word. And so we show love to our leaders here in Virginia number one. So let me go on with the week. So today, this morning, we had two things going on at the same time. Our bishop, the visionary, had an idea to bring the men's department into our wonderful jurisdiction. And let me tell you, my husband, none other than Pastor Frederick Maurice Edmonds Sr., who is the chairman and president of the Men Perfecting Men's Department for the Historic Virginia Number no. 1, did a kickoff rally here in the temple for the men's department. Now, I will, I'm not going to lie. Y'all know I'm a little biased. I never lie to y'all. I'm a little biased. Y'all my friends. We family. I'm going to be honest. I'm a little biased. But what I can say is that the men were out here supporting one another, praising God together. And yes, I did sneak into their service because y'all know I had the support, right? I mean, it only made sense. I had to support the service and it was a phenomenal time that they had. Superintendent Smith gave a mighty word. I'm going to tell you, he talked about Jonathan and he asked a simple question. Have you seen Jonathan? Do you know where Jonathan is? Talking about King David friends, Jonathan, the one that took off his robe and reminded his people that he was going to support David regardless of what his dad said. The one that said, I'm going to make sure that my friend gets to his destination because he wanted to serve the father and not just serve his father. I'm telling you, it was an amazing message. And if you know Superintendent Smith from the Eastern Shore, you know that it was a mighty word from God. I'm telling you, Virginia number one, we're doing amazing things. We're doing awesome things and we're moving forward in the things of God. And then at the same time, we had the women's workshops going on where we talked about walking in purpose on purpose. You heard me right. Walking in purpose 
on purpose. We talked about women in several different areas of ministry. We had a nurse practitioner tell us how she walked got a little tongue twisted there and then we had myself come and talk to you about as a professional in higher education how i walk in purpose on purpose and let me tell you there were some nuggets that were dropped we talked about being intentional in the workplace we talked about making sure that we let our light so shine before men that men may see your good work and glorify your father which is in heaven listen it's time for tonight's service I'm excited. We have an awesome speaker that's coming forth tonight. None other than general board member Prince. We come to bless him. We come to glorify him. We come to honor him. Hallelujah. Everybody clap your hands. We'll bless your name. Come on, you got to command your soul this morning. We'll bless your name. Everybody clap your hands. We'll bless your name. Yes, sir. Ah, yes, Lord. We'll bless your name. Hey, yes, sir. We'll bless your name. Here we go. I will bless the Lord.
Bible, the psalmist said, he did not have to let me live, and he did not have to let me live, but I'm glad to be in the service just one more time. Is there anybody else that's glad to be in the service just one more time? Hallelujah. Millions did not make it, but thanks be to God, we are one of the ones that did. We welcome you tonight to our Friday night uh, empowerment night uh, during our 102nd spring conference and workers meeting. And we are grateful that you have taken time out to join us here at New Community Temple Church of God and Christ of the historic Virginia First Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. Uh, tonight we have a special guest with us, General Board Member Bishop Prince E.W. Bryant. And so we're coming to magnify and glorify the name of the Lord. We want to give honor and deference to our jurisdictional prelate, Bishop Mark Anthony Thomas. Come on, let's give him honor where honor is due. We give honor to Bishop Tony H. Catbell, who is with our speaker right now, to all of the administrative assistants and our superintendents. We give God glory and honor for them. We also are grateful for our jurisdictional supervisor of women, Mother Nellie M. Towns. Come on, let's give God some praise for our great and awesome supervisor of women. We give deference to um, our First Lady, First Lady Naomi Kim Thomas, uh, to Mother Campbell, and to all of our district missionaries and the women of God. Mother Hardy, God bless you. It's good to see you in the house on tonight. And so we're going to magnify and glorify the name of the Lord. Before we continue on, we're going to ask for all that are to my far left, if you all will come in towards the center aisle, all to my far right, if you all will move your way into the center aisle, our bishop will be pleased when he come in. Let's give God some praise for this awesome choir who has been ministering to us the gospel in song all week long. We're going to continue to magnify and glorify the name of the Lord. Hear ye our choir on tonight. Thank you. 
our invocation by Elder Edward States. Our Old Testament scripture will be coming from Evangelist Missionary Alfreda Fleetwood. Our New Testament scripture is going to be coming from Elder Del Delvery Davis. And then we'll have another selection from our choir. Say amen as they come in that order. My soul. so good. You are a mighty and awesome God. You are so good. And Lord, in case we didn't, we want to thank you for waking us up this morning. We want to thank you for giving us the strength we need to accomplish the task you set out for us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your graciousness. Thank you, Lord, for your loving Thank you, Lord, for just making ways out of no ways. We thank you, Lord, that you touched our bodies. You've given us the strength. You heal. You delivered. You set free. Thank you, Lord. You're just an awesome God. Can't thank you enough but want to because you are so good. And we have some who are ill, some who are going through things, even here. Let it not be a distraction to the word that's coming forth, but it be an uplift, a strengthening, a delivering. And we praise and we bless you, Lord. And of course, we thank you for our leader. We thank you for our bishop, an awesome man of God. We thank you, Lord, for his leadership because we see you're guiding and directing him. So Lord, we thank you. So touch, deliver, strengthen, all those things, all the actions we had during this week of the meeting. And we thank you, because it's only because of you, only because of you, only because of you, only because of you. Only because of you. Only because of you. Now we can shout hallelujah. hallelujah. We can shout praise the Lord. Praise Thank you for all you have done. And Father, again, we thank you. We're looking forward to the word. Defeat us with your word. And we give you praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen.
very familiar scripture to us tonight, Nehemiah, the fourth chapter. But it came to pass that when Sam Ballard heard that we builded the wall, he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. And he spake before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, what do these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which were burned? Now Tobiah the Ammonite was by him, and he said, even, ah, glory, even if they build the a fox go up, he shall break down their stone wall. Hear, O oh, our God, for we, dis we are despised and turn their reproach upon their own heads and give them for a prey in the land of captivity and cover not their iniquity and let not their sin be blotted out from before thee, for they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. So build we the wall, and all the wall joined was joined together unto the half thereof. For the people had a mind to work the word of the Lord. the second chapter starting at verse 15 we who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law but by the faith of Jesus Christ even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law but by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified but if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For through the law, am, I am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ living in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. The word of God for the people of God. I know. 
if you can't say nothing else, I at least want to be able to tell God, thank you. Anybody thankful to be in their right mind? Anybody thankful for the use and activity of their limbs? I'd be glad to be in the left. That's one more day. Hallelujah. And so, God, thank you. It's now time for us to hear a message from the Lord, an inspirational speaker um, that is a friend of this jurisdiction. Um, he is the pastor of the Lion of Judah, Church of God in Christ. From Manassas, Virginia. Yeah, he was formerly our Sunday school, our state Sunday school superintendent for a number of years. He is currently a vice chairman. Um, and let's give God some praise from, for this minister of the gospel Pastor, Assistant Superintendent, excuse me, Kenneth had to say amen as he comes. Come on, let's give God some glory. Glory to God. This is the day that the Lord hath made and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Giving honor to all that honor is due. Amen. I have just a few moments. Amen to share an inspirational message. And the word inspired means to be God breathed. And I'm believing that over the next couple of moments that God is going to breathe on us that we might become inspired workers. Glory be to God. You'll find me today in uh, the book of 1 John, the second chapter. And there's a couple of verses in there that God has been uh, dealing with me about, amen, and I'll just bring you into the conversation that God has been having with me. On, Glory be to God. In 1 John chapter 2, about verse 20, it says, but you have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. And verse 27 says, but the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you. And you need not any man teach you, but the same anointing teacheth you all things and is truth and is no lie. Even as it hath taught you, you shall abide in him. Now, Father, sanctify the words of my mouth and let me speak under the unction of your spirit. Bless the ears of your people. Give them a receiving heart, O oh God, that they might receive the engrafted word of God that is able to save our very souls. In Jesus' name, we call it done. Amen. And if I could leave with you a message, amen, and a, a, a thought, amen, that you are anointed for your assignment. You are anointed for your assignment. One of the things that we have become mesmerized with today is technology and the advancement of things that make everything easy. Amen. We have cell phones and devices, tablets and computers, amen, at our fingertips, amen, which allows us to accomplish work at phenomenal speed. And just because we're able to do more doesn't mean that we have absolutely become more effective. What we have found out, amen, that with technology, amen, even people who are not really that well at doing things have become giants. Uh, when I was in high school and grade school, we used to call those that were, had an intellectual proclivity like that little eggheads, and things were done by force. But as I grew and matured in God and the things of God, I found out, amen, that there's a distinction, amen, that separates people in their ability to accomplish anything. What I found out, amen, there, there's an enablement from God that God gives you when he gives you an assignment. And all of us have been in here in this workers meeting is because workers have come together because we have an assignment. And while we have an assignment, God would be wrong to, what, call you to do something and then don't enable you to do it. But as we read the scriptures, amen, we find historically that the anointing, amen, was smeared or it's an ointment that was smeared and made and put on people that God had anointed for a purpose. He had given them assignment, and then what he did was he enabled them with an anointing, amen, to accomplish their assignment. 
And sometimes in ourselves we feel inadequate, amen, because of flesh. Amen. But I'm here to encourage every worker here tonight. Amen. You are anointed for your assignment. Your assignment is not something that God happened to happen, stand, pull out of, out of, you know, the ether and said, hey, why don't you just do this? God has skillfully and graciously put everything you need in you to accomplish your assignment. Some of us don't understand why we are wired the way we are. Oh, glory be to God. Oh, glory be to God, because of God's, what, purpose in us, it enables us to do what we're going to do. Amen. And so what God did is, amen, he would send the priests, amen, and he would designate people and he would pour the oil out on their head. In the Old Testament, it was the, the priest, the prophet, and the king that were anointed. And the anointing oil couldn't be duplicated for you. It was not to be used haphazardly, but it was to be applied to those who had a work for God. I wish I had people who were workers who didn't know that I got to work for God. And it's going to take more than just my common sense and my common effort. What God has called me to do is bigger than my ability to accomplish it. And when I need somebody and need something to get the assignment done, it's called the anointing. The anointing. You have an unction from the Holy One. When I first got saved, I didn't know what unction was. They didn't talk about a whole lot about the Holy Ghost over in Germany. They said the unction of God. And I realized after reading that the unction of God calls you to function. No unction? Oh, come on, no function. Oh, glory be to God. And so that was a distinguishing mark on one's ability in God. It's as if they had this thing called unction. And we spent time in prayer and fasting and laying out before God, seeking God that he would give us an unction so that he would enable us to function. Oh, glory be to God. I want you to know, amen, there used to be a commercial that says, don't leave home without this little car. Uh, don't try to work of God without an unction. God wants us to be realizing, amen, that the most needful thing in this season is an unction or an anointing for God. Amen. We used to spend time at the altar. We would tarry at the altar. We would labor at the altar, cry at the altar, lifted up hands and beseeching God to anoint us afresh but post pandemic we want to get out as fast as we can oh yes yeah, quiet amen but it's the truth anyhow glory be to God I would that we could just seek again, amen. Cry out again. Anoint me for functioning. Anoint me, oh God, for work, oh God. Anoint me in my assignment. Anoint me to do what you've called me to do. And when the unction of God is on your life, you don't need a publicity campaign to let everybody know you a worker. Your work will be proven through the unction and the demonstration of the Spirit. Uh, glory be to God. But the anointing which you have received of him abides in you. And sometimes what we have got to recognize that you've got to say, I'm anointed. Few people will say I'm anointed. Uh, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to get a little prideful. Amen. And listen, until you said that you were saved, nobody accepted it. Nobody could tell me, mother, amen, that I was saved. I had to realize in myself that I am saved. They wouldn't tell me I had the Holy Ghost. I had to say I had the Holy Ghost. When you get the anointing on you, you can say, I'm anointed. It's not pride. It's just truth. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. But the anointing which you have received of him abides in you. That means it don't just come and go, it lives there. Oh, glory be to God. I would that we can understand that when we live in the anointing, amen, we are always ready. Glory. 
I heard the other night the preacher said, if you got to consecrate to preach, <laughs> you got to go and turn in 40 days before you can come out and say something. It's too late. Lives are in the balance. Glory be to God. People are dying. Folk need to be healed. Folk need to be delivered. And the anointing is what does it. We don't have time to spend consecrating when God has anointed us and we've got to acknowledge there's an anointing on my life. Amen. I'm getting ready to go to my seat, but Luke 4 and 19 says these words. Amen. Amen. That when Jesus came out of the wilderness, he said that the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel. He has sent me to preach deliverance to the captive the recovering of sight to the blind, to set up liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. He didn't wait. He acknowledged. He acknowledged that he had an unction on him to cast out devils, heal the sick, to deliver those that are bound. And we act like we ain't got no anointing. The devil is a liar. He's fooled somebody, but he won't fool you. I'm anointed. Yes. Sure, it'll be all right. You can say it in here. As they say, this is a safe space. You can say I'm anointed. And when you know that you're anointed, you don't let folk sick just remain sick in your presence. Oh, glory be to God. I don't want to get in nobody's business. That's my business. I don't let people remain sick among me. Oh, glory be to God. I don't let burdens just keep going on and folk talking about they are depressed. I got to go to my seat. We're the most, I've seen this society now as the most depressed people. There's no depression in God when the joy of the Lord is your, what, strength? And if you are anointed, you ought to have the joy. You ought to have the strength to tell somebody you don't have to stay sick. You don't have to stay bound. You don't have to be broke up. Your life can be changed. There is anointing that makes you Different. Is there any but workers in here? Glory. Workers. I heard you today, mother. Oh, glory be to God. You said everybody ain't working. Amen. But when the credit comes out, everybody shows up. There's some work you can't fake. You can't fake deliverance. Glory be to God. You can't fake opening up blind eyes. When you're anointed, there is no fake. It's just the real. This is the way we operate every day. It's the real standard. Glory be to God. And so I just come to encourage every worker today. Amen. You may be tired in your body, but the Bible says, amen, the spirit man is indeed willing. It's just the flesh that's weak. And if we put our flesh on the altar once again and ask God to anoint me afresh, the winds of refreshing that come from the Holy Ghost will fall down on us. We'll get up and work again. Is there anybody that still wants to do a work for God? Somebody who knows their assignment that it needs an anointing tonight. Tonight is our night for a fresh anointing. Oh, glory be to God. Glory be to God. As I'm going in my seat, God told me two weeks ago, he said, let your head lack no, no oil. So that means I need to be up in the presence of God. Pour it out on me again. Oh, glory be to God. Can we just lift our hands for a moment? Glory be to God. Shout it. It won't shout. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, glory be to God. We've been baptized with the Holy Ghost, filled, amen. But I need a fresh anointing. I need the refreshing. 
that comes from the Holy Ghost. And only God can do it. Only God can do it. And when he does it, you can't just get an anointing and sit down. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to preach deliverance to the captives, the recovering of sight to them that are blind, to preach, to preach, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. you don't know what acceptable is that means we ain't waiting every 50 years for jubilee it means tonight is my night y'all pray my strength in the lord he said i'm anointed i'm anointed there we go come on say i'm anointed i'm anointed for this moment I'm anointed for this season. I'm anointed for my family. I'm anointed for my community. Come on, let the devil know. I'm anointed, and you can't have me. I'm anointed, and you won't defeat me. I'm anointed. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm anointed. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm anointed. Hey. Our worship team is coming out to lead us in some songs of worship. Hey! Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, lift your voice to the Lord for a second. He's worthy, yes, he is, of all the glory and honor. The speaker just said, tonight is your night. So if you really believe it, stand to your feet and let's give our God what he's doing in this place. God is great and greatly to be praised. Amen. Glory. Glory to his name. We're going to bless the Lord in his place. Put those hands together with us. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We lift your name, Jesus. Thank you, God. Yeah. Yes, Lord. It's real easy. We know it. Lift it up. God is great and greatly to be praised. Glory, glory to his name. God is great and greatly to be praised bless the lord oh my soul come on sing it sing god is great and greatly to be praised glory glory to his name sing god is bless the lord come on just put those hands together in this place and let's bless the name of jesus he's worthy of all the glory and honor and we came to give it to him amen yes lord yeah come on sing bless the lord it's another verse sing i will bow i will bow before his man i will lift my hands and sing to the lord sing god is and greatly to be praised bless the lord come on put those hands together all over this place and let's bless the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yes, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. We lift your name. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, we're going to do that top part again. It's real easy. Lift it up. Say, God is great. And greatly to be praised. Glory, glory to his name. Say, God is. And greatly to be praised. Bless the Lord. Well, it's real easy, yes, Lord. I get joy when I think about. I get joy when I think about. Sing, I get joy when I think about. I get joy when I think about. Yes, Lord. Sing, you don't know like I know. Oh, you don't know like I know. That's what he's done. That's what he's done. That's what he's done. That's what he's done. He picked me up. He 
turn me around. He placed my feet on solid ground. When I was lost, couldn't find my way. He brought me out to be here today. That's what he's done. That's what he's done. That's what he's done. That's what he's done. Say that. That's what he's done. That's what he's done. We give him praise for the ways he's made, for the doors he's opened. That's what he's done. That's what he's done. Now give your God praise for what he's done for you in this place. Come on, put those hands together. The Lord's been too good to you. He's been too kind. The least you can do is give him everything you have in this place. Yes, Lord. Come on, let's go to the next one. It's real easy in this place. Yeah. I don't know what you come to do. Yeah. I don't know what you come to do. Sing, I didn't come to look at you. Yes, Lord. I didn't come to look at you. Can we practice in this place? I come to clap my hand. Let me see you clap him. I come to clap my hand. Yes, Lord, he's here. I come to clap my hand. Yeah, I come to clap my hand. Come on, we're saying that it's good. I come to clap my hands. Let me see you clap. I come to clap my hands. Let me see you clap. I come to clap my hands. Yeah, yeah. I come to clap my hands. Yes, Lord, we're still there. Come on, I come to do my dance. Pick them up and put them down. I come to do my dance. Let me see you move. I come to do my dance. Yes, Lord. Woo. I come to do my dance. Yes, Lord, we stand there. Sing, I come to clap my hands. I come to do my dance. I come to clap my hands. I come to do my dance. I come to clap my hands. I come to do my dance. I come to clap my hands. Now let me see you clap them all over this place. here. Woo! That's it right there. We came to praise them this evening. Come on, let's get back into it real big, real big. One more time. Sing, I come to clap my hands. I come to do my dance. I come to clap my hands. I come to do my dance. I come to leave for joy. I come to leave for joy. I come to leave for joy. Let me see you leave. Say, chosen we are anointed and the oil is for us to make a difference in our communities and in our homes we now have our leadership in our in the heads of our church here on this evening 
And I want you to give honor and deference to our jurisdictional prelate, Bishop Mark Anthony Thomas. Let's salute him on this evening. Come on, Virginia first. Let's give honor where honor is due. A great man of God, an awesome man of God, a leader who's worthy of double honor. And we give God deference for him. I'll defer and not introduce his guests but we give honor to Bishop G. Wesley Hardy of Virginia Fourth Jurisdiction. We give honor to Bishop Dwight Green, Virginia Fifth Jurisdiction. And we have representatives here from Virginia Third, Administrative Assistant Cooper. And we give honor and deference to you all. Um, it is now time for our leader to come to give us some words. What a tremendous meeting we've had thus far. It's been a revival. It's been a spring refreshing. And I'm so glad that I've been able to make it every single day. You don't want to miss a moment, a minute, as God continues to bless us. Come on, let's, get, let's rest on our feet and let's receive our jurisdictional prelate, Bishop Mark Anthony Thomas Sr. Come on, let's give our great God a great praise. Come on, let's give our great God a great praise. The one that woke us up this morning, the one who started us on our way, gave us food, clothing, and shelter. Come on, let's give our great God great praise. Whoa. We certainly give honor to God, our Father, to Jesus, our elder brother, the Holy Ghost, our keeper. Thank God for his spirit and anointing that we yet feel in this place. Thanking God for our presider on this evening, the administrative assistant, Eugene C. McCown, Jr. Let's praise the Lord for him. Amen. He does a phenomenal job, serve also as our uh, COO. And we thank God tonight for our great honored guests. Uh, I consider him to be a second father. General Board Member Bishop Prince E. W. Bryant Sr. God bless you, Bishop. We're so delighted to have you. We're so delighted to have you. Come on, Virginia. Let's give God praise for our General Board Member. I'm honored that he's in our midst. He and uh, my father, my spiritual father, and my natural father. Uh, we yet honor his presence today, the Bishop Ted G. Thomas Sr. Even in his absence. And my mother, Mother Charlotte Virginia Clifton Thomas, we remember them. And uh, Bishop Bryant has been a friend to our family. Uh, down through the years and we're honored that he's able to share with us tonight amen I know they've been acknowledged but they came to share with us and uh, I count these leaders as mentors as well we're thankful tonight for the Bishop G. Wesley Hardy Virginia fourth jurisdiction amen we're thankful for the Bishop Dwight L. Green we salute them and I certainly praise God for our very own administrative assistant Bishop Tony H. Campbell great Christian gentleman and uh, we appreciate him he has become the father of our jurisdiction and uh, he uh, ran our first ever what we call the Shepherds Summit and Timothy Project uh, to help to mentor pastors and uh, alike during our workers meeting and it was absolutely phenomenal let's praise God for him one more time amen to administrative assistant Cooper Virginia 3 amen amen thank God for him to amen administrative assistant Dr. Dwight Nixon God bless you 
Amen. To this quorum of superintendents, pastors, amen, elders, ministers, we appreciate each and every one of you on tonight in the house of the Lord. To our own jurisdictional supervisor, amen, Mother Nellie M. Towns. Come on, let's praise God for our mother. Didn't she bless us this morning? God bless you, Mother Towns. Amen. To my own lovely wife, Evangelist Naomi Kim Thomas. Amen. Mother Campbell, Bishop Campbell's wife. Come on, let's bless God for her. Amen. I see Mother Hardy here tonight. God bless you, Mother. Amen. Amen. I, I can't get them under that balcony, but I believe I see Mother Willis with us tonight. Oh, my God. Saints, come on, let's bless the Lord for Mother Judith Willis. Come on, I need you to give God praise. So glad to have you with us, Mother. God bless you. Amen. And we even honor, amen, in his absence, the Bishop of the Third Jurisdiction. Amen. My friend and my brother, I was honored to be able to participate uh, in that transition. Amen. My friend, Bishop Jonathan G. Willis. Come on, let's praise God for him. And it's so hard to praise God for all of these. I see some more friends, Virginia Third in the house. Amen. I see them all around. Amen. Y'all, I'm going to ask Virginia Third to stand up. They look so nice. I'm going to ask them to stand up. Come on, y'all give praise. Virginia One, will you welcome our family? Will you welcome our family? Would you welcome our family tonight? And thank you for being with us on tonight. Uh, and it's hard to celebrate uh, all of you without thinking of uh, one, the Bishop Ellie Willis Sr. And then two, the Bishop Ellie Willis II. What a tremendous uh, family of leaders and uh, who have served our area, the nation, and the world. Uh, who can forget Willis Broadcasting? Uh, and if it wasn't for Willis Broadcasting, some of us would have never been heard of. Um, but we are so grateful that you are here and uh, we're thankful for your presence, amen. And certainly we are honored. I don't know, you may not be in the first or the third jurisdiction. You may not even be Church of God in Christ, but you decided to worship with us tonight. I, I want you to stand. I want you to stand. You're just a friend that came in. My brother, come, is that Pastor Johnson? Oh, my friend, Pastor Kelvin Johnson, God bless you, amen. It's, amen, God bless you, my brother. Amen. God bless you. Come on, saints. Let's praise God for these that have come to worship with us. Come on. We can do better than that. We can do better than that. Listen, the hour's growing now, and we certainly want to hear a word from the Lord on tonight uh, from our general board member, Bishop Bryant, on tonight. And so I want to move as swiftly as I possibly can. I'm going to ask the Elder Fleetwood to come at this time and assist me uh, because we've had uh, Good Shepherd Night the last two nights and uh, tonight is the night where we see, amen, uh, where we bless our pastor aid workers for blessing their pastor. And I tell you, I want to praise God for every pastor aid worker. You all blessed your pastors on this year. Come on, let's give God praise for all the pastors aid leaders. Amen. And uh, Elder Fleetwood is going to tell me we have a tradition. We like to encourage them to bless the pastor. And uh, we like to give them a little something for their diligence and their service in the kingdom. And so, uh, I got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Is that what it takes? It's about six. All right. And uh, so we're going to start with third place. Third place, Mount Lebanon Church of God in Christ, Administrative Assistant Larry Gray. 
third place Mount Lebanon Church of all oh, our supervisors standing in God bless you mother amen God bless you and you tell mother that I said she did a tremendous job and I'm going to give you one for mother come on let's praise the Lord God bless you mother All right. Second All right. place bishop, Upper Room Church of God in Christ. Upper Pastor Room Mabel. Church of God in Christ. Elder Tyler's coming. Pastor the president. Used to be. All right. Well, we're going to give it to you. You still assist. Here it is. One, two. God bless you. Tell us, tell us, tell us, do it again next year. All right. All right. All right. Number one, St. Stephen Church of God in Christ. St. Stephen's Church. Elliot Bruce Hughes. <laughs> oh, Sister Pam Mitchell. Missionary Pam Mitchell. Come on, y'all give her a great hand. We got two things in common. We love y'all. Yes. <laughs> and, and we love crabs. Amen. Yes, sir. I think you got enough to get you a bushel. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> Come on, let's give them a great hand. Amen. Thank God for these pastors, aid leaders. Thank God for these pastors. We have some of the greatest pastors in the world. Amen. And we love them. We thank God for each of you on tonight. Amen. We're going to turn the service quickly into the hands of uh, our administrative assistant, uh, Bishop Tony H. Campbell. Uh, he's going to come and lead us further into the ministry of giving at this time. Come on, clap your hands and receive him as he comes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah. This should be a happy time. Praise God. We're about to be a blessing. Praise God. There's something that we can do that many times we forget. We can bless folk. Praise God. And the Lord has blessed us to be able to, praise God, give in an offering. And tonight is a special night. Bishop Prince Bryant is an awesome man of God. How many have heard his messages, heard his, his, his sermons? Come on. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I tell you, he's a preacher's preacher. And uh, he holds a special place in my heart. Praise the Lord. I tell you, I love this, I love this preacher. Yeah, he took me to school today. <laughs> He took me to school today, and I thank the Lord for him. And so I'm up, praise God, and saints, I need your help. Turn to somebody and say, the bishop said he needs some help. Yeah, and the other, turn the other way and say, and I'm going to help him. Praise the Lord. And so we are, praise God, honored to have him in our midst, a general board member. And um, I thank the Lord that he is who he is, and he's a wonderful man. One of the things that I learned some time ago is that some people are just nice. Some people, you know, they may be spiritual, but they're not nice. But he's nice. He's a friend to everybody. He has a smile on his face. And I'm prepared tonight, praise God, to put out, praise God, to get ready to hear a message from him. But before I do that, praise God, I'm here to do, praise God, an easy task, because I know y'all gonna help me. You just said you was gonna help me. Praise the Lord. And so, Bishop, praise God, Mark Anthony Thomas has given $1,000. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah.
Good evening and welcome back to Virginia number one uh, workers meeting our hundredth and second and we have been having a hard time in the Lord. I mean the choir is jamming, the band is doing their thing, yes, our inspirational speaker came and just followed along with what we've been talking about all week long, making sure we know that the anointing makes a difference and we are excited about what God is doing in the service tonight. How about you Superintendent, have you been enjoying I've, yourself? I've been enjoying myself, I've been enjoying myself myself and and I just enjoying what God is doing um it's a revival it this is. is this has clearly been a revival uh, sent down from heaven and, and it's almost like you don't want it to end right <laughs> We don't want it to end, but here we are. We're on Friday, and we've had a wonderful day so far with the men's service, the women's service, the women's workshops, celebrating our wonderful supervisor, yes. none other than Mother Towns, who is an amazing woman of God. Yes. I heard she preached the house down the house on down. today, letting mm -hmm. us know that we have work to do and that some of us ain't working. She checked us yes, today. Uh -huh. Oh, she checked us and reminded us to get in line. These mothers is hot this week, I tell you. Thing. Yes, <laughs> mother, mother, mother preached and then came down and laid hands on the oh, people. Oh, she worked. Uh, it, it was awesome. Um, right before that, though, we had our first ever MPM, yes, our men's perfecting men's yes. service, and it was it was awesome. Who's was the chairman? Awesome. The cha I think I you know him know. very well. I think Who's you know him chairman? very well. Why don't you just say it? I know you want to tell me. Oh, I told him earlier. Don't worry about it. <laughs> None other than the pastor of Bethlehem Church of God in Christ. Uh, he is married to, I believe, it's me. Praise God, and his name is Freddie Maurice Edmonds Senior. Yes, Amen. <laughs> Pray for her, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, he's the chairman. Yeah. What an awesome job. Yes. What a very, Amazing. very, very awesome job. He's got a great staff yes. that's working with him. And then uh, the person of Elder Flowers, yep. he's got Pastor Reed, mm -hmm. he's got Elder Rose yes. working with him. Great staff. But it was it was a, 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 a good group of men that were there. Uh, Pastor Sam, Superintendent Samuel Smith. Oh, yes, he did. Spoke today. I mean, it was the power of the mm -hmm. Holy Ghost. And it was just great to see men together. Yeah. Giving God the praise, worshiping God together, praising God together. Uh, it was just awesome. We, we just we just have so many things going on here. So many at our things. Meeting. So many things. And then the women had a wonderful workshop that we talked about earlier today. Walking in purpose, on purpose. We had two phenomenal speakers that gave awesome uh, examples of what it means to walk in purpose, on purpose, even in the workplace. We talk about marketplace ministry mm -hmm. and going out and being an example for Christ in the workplace. And so I thank God for what the women are doing. And we have a wonderful leader in Mother Towns that gives us the ability to be innovative, mm -hmm. to try new things, to talk about topics that are very important and relevant to today's time. And then we already talked about Mother Towns service, how she came in and blew us away. And here we are tonight. Yes, we're here we are tonight, the final night of the week before we go into the weekend and official day. How are you excited about the speaker tonight? Um, I, I mean, Bishop Prince E. Bryant is a, as we call him, he's a preacher's preacher. Yes. <laughs> so uh, we're, we're, we're so excited. We're more than anything, we're honored to have him with oh, us. Oh, yes. He's definitely an one, honor. Of, one of the fathers uh, in Church of God in Christ. And to have him here with Virginia number one, it's just an honor. Yes. Um, but then we're going to hear from him. Yeah. Uh, and I'm telling you, I love the way he holds the microphone. <laughs> he puts that thumb up right there. And when I tell you, Bishop Bryant can preach, you're, oh, yes. you're, you're in for a treat you're if you've in, never heard him. But if treat. you have heard him, get ready. Because you know what's up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. it's about you to already know what's <laughs> about to go down. And we are excited. Hey, listen, we're in the middle of offering. And we all know that we have saints are told to sow into good ground. And I can tell you for a fact, as an example, as a witness with a testimony, mm -hmm. that sowing into this ground is definitely good ground. Great there ground. are multiple different ways to give. I believe they may be put on the screen or in the chat. We want you guys to go ahead, if you feel so led by the Spirit to give. We don't want to tell you an amount. We want you to be led by the Lord to know what to give. But I want you to know whatever you give, the Lord will press down. He will shake Amen. it together. And I promise you, it Amen. will run over. Amen. and to your bosom that men will give. Amen. That's what the scripture says because I truly Amen. believe that if we stand on the word of God, Amen. we will never fail and that he will always keep his promises. Amen. Amen. As she stated, this is this is great ground to give yes. on. Yes. Um, 
take on the farmer's mentality. I often oh, tell yes. people that, yeah. you know, plant a seed and expect a harvest. Mm -hmm. um, then we give because we believe in the cause. Oh, yes. uh, uh, Bishop Mark Anthony Thomas has put together some awesome things here, Virginia, number one. And I can tell you right now, uh, uh, I'm a superintendent. I know that the churches in my district, we, we're reaping the harvest oh, yes. <laughs> from what's coming forth in this jurisdiction. Um, so uh, this is great ground to sow on. Um, and it's, like she said, it's many different forms that you can give. We have mm -hmm. our give Lafay. Yes. We do have our cash app. Of um, so just 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 give and give with a smile on your face. That's right. And, 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 and because God says he loves a cheerful giver. And then tell him thank you in expectation That's of what's right. going to come from this seed. Amen. I, I believe your family will be blessed from this seed. I believe you'll be blessed from this Amen. seed. Uh, I believe that anything that's attached to you will be blessed from this seed yes. that you're giving on tonight. Absolutely. And I know that um, there's so many things going on in the jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. When you give to this jurisdiction, yes. the historic first Come on. jurisdiction, again. Historic. historic first, historic. Yeah, 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 uh -huh. yeah. jurisdiction first. number one uh -huh. of Virginia. <laughs> Yes, that's what we are. That's right. Um, we are doing some awesome things. Superintendent already talked about. We have our launch of our men's department. We have our women's department that is going forward. We have our youth department that mm -hmm. is second to none. We have our Saturday night live Come coming on. up Saturday night. You don't want to miss it. We want you to register because we're going to feed you. We're going to have games. We're going to have a good time in the Lord. So you that's don't want to miss that awesome opportunity to fellowship with our newly appointed YP Come on. and our beautiful chair lady who is always working, working woman. And we thank God for both of them. And we also have the music department. That's amazing. Our Sunday school department is thriving. Come but on. guess what? Superintendent's here. He's over our AIM. Uh -oh. He is our AIM chairman. Uh -oh. And if you know anything about AIM, our AIM is second to now. We have an amazing time under his leadership. We have grown in our AIM's department and we have had a wonderful time at our conferences. It is not just just become about AIM or the youth. It is the family conference. Yes, sir. And I know that it's not time to reveal all the information. <laughs> I know we about to hear a little bit, but can you give us just a, a baby nugget, <laughs> just a, a tiny little baby crumb from the master's table about AIM? Just a little bit, just a little bit. Bless the people. AIM, Virginia number one AIM is, is each year we go up, we go up, Higher. we go up, we go That's up, it. we go up. Uh, one of the reasons we go up is because we we've, we've got I'm gonna say this I'm gonna say this really loudly we've got we've got the greatest presidents chair ladies oh, yes. we got we got the greatest I, I know you got I know you got some great ones in your jurisdiction but they ain't greater than ours ain't. we love everybody though say that <laughs> we, we love everybody okay, thank you for I'm just gonna tell the truth Shane, no, no, no. I'm a little biased <laughs> but but uh, uh, we come together I always call us. Uh, uh, um, we come together and we're the A team. Yes. We come together and we're the spiritual Avengers. And so we come together. Oh, I love it. I like uh, our youth department, our Sunday school yes. evangelism, our missions, our music department, scholastic motivation. I said oh, it yes. right on the first go. Go line. look at you. Look, God <laughs> is doing the work. I said it. God I said it two is times doing the work. work. I love it. <laughs> we come together. Our, our children's church. Yes. We all come together uh, for three days this year. Um, um, I'm excited because um, our times are changing. So we usually go in July, mm -hmm. but this year we'll be in June. June the 19th, the 20th, and the 21st. Um, it's going to be awesome. Uh, we, we're going to unveil where we're going to be at right after the workers meeting. Oh, I thought I could get it for you. I tried. Right, I tried. right after the workers meeting. Let me give you a hint, though. If you love last year, you'll love this year. I like it. I <laughs> like if, it. If you love last year. Uh-huh. You're going to love, love this year. One more time for the Holy Ghost. If you love last oh, year. Because yes. everybody loved Fredericksburg oh, Christian it School. Beautiful. It was oh, yes. awesome. We turned it into BA1 Christian We school. sure did. We, <laughs> we turned took over the whole campus. It was over the whole campus. Yes. But if you love last year, you're going to love, love this year. That's all I can say. You got, you got to stay tuned. Right after workers meet, right Bishop after. Bishop might Bishop might unveil it Sunday after he preach. I don't know. Ooh. You got you got you got to make sure you tune in. You got to stay tuned in. You, <laughs> you got to stay, stay connected. You got to stay connected. But I can guarantee you this: um, it will be the same thing it's been, which is spirit led. It will be God driven, uh, and at the end of the day, you're gonna leave. You're gonna leave saying, "I want more." Mm. You're not going to say I had enough. You're going to say yeah. I want more, but you're going to be able to go back to your local church. You'll be able to go back to your family yes. and, and be filled up with something to give. So, VA1 uh, uh, aim, stay tuned. You're you going to look, look, like I told Bishop the other night, you're going to know sooner than. 
I like it. <laughs> Sooner than later, we gonna find out. I tried to see if he's gonna get too excited and drop some nuggets that he wasn't supposed to tell us yet. I was getting a little excited. He was. I felt it. I, I was felt getting, it. I was getting a little excited. I felt it. See, y'all can't see off camera. Our chair lady right here off camera. She was working. getting a little excited. She working <laughs> always. She always working on something. Yes. <laughs> and, and, but she make us look good. Always. She makes, she makes always. us look real good with the flies and the graphics. Oh, yeah. Never so. miss the flyers. <laughs> Never miss. Never miss. For sure. But I am excited about AIM. I can testify that we've had a great time at AIM, all of my children. Everybody had a good time. And we are ready to go into service to have a wonderful time with the Lord. What's going on? We're having a great time here um, with everything going on. But again, I'm telling you, this is good ground. This is wonderful ground, and we're growing, we're moving forward, and we're going to higher heights and deeper depths in the Lord. Please stay tuned for a wonderful word from God. Don't have go a blessed anywhere. day. Don't go nowhere. Stay, stay right, right here. here. Stay connected. Hey, yeah, how about know. you follow? And how about you share? Yeah. So that somebody else know what's going on. Comment. Comment. Like, all of them things. All of mm, things with the heart. Subscribe to the YouTube page. All of the things. On. What else? Is that it? <laughs> I think that's all. That's it. Up. That's all the things. Do everything. Have a great evening, but stay tuned with God us. God bless you. smile on your face. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Find somebody and tell them, neighbor, I choose to rejoice. Now, if you're ready to give God glory and give him high praise, I need you to clap real big. One, two, one.
service will be turned into the hands of our jurisdictional prelate, Bishop Mark Anthony Thomas, Sr. Amen. If you've been enjoying the workers' meeting, can you clap your hands and make some noise? It has truly been a phenomenal meeting all week long. I know that we have all been blessed by every speaker, and I believe that God is getting ready to take us a step higher on tonight. If you believe it, shout, I agree. Man, I had just a few announcements as I stand in the stead of our general jurisdictional secretary, Elder Fleetwood, on tonight. Amen. We want to encourage everyone to join us at the VA One Cares luncheon tomorrow. Clap your hands for VA One Cares. Amen. Our bishop has a vision uh, for our jurisdiction and our community. Uh, he desires to be a blessing uh, at large, and VA One Cares is just the first step. Uh, in that direction. Tickets are a small fee of $40. And if you have not purchased a ticket yet, we encourage you to purchase that ticket and join us at 2 p.m. tomorrow in the Christian Center for VA One Cares. Everybody shout official day. Come on, clap your hands for official day. Our Lord's Day celebration is upon us. And I know that our bishop has a word from heaven to feed us on Sunday morning. I want to encourage you, if you had not had the chance to share uh, in our Bishop's Love Offering, we want you to sow that seed uh, as soon as possible. You don't have to wait until Sunday morning, but you can meet our jurisdictional secretary, Elder Fleetwood, or our administrative assistant, Larry Gray, and you can turn those monies in as early as possible and is convenient for you. We thank you in advance for your consideration and your uh, agreement to do so. Uh, these are our observations. God bless you. Come on, put those hands together one more time. Let's give the Lord praise. I understand they failed to acknowledge uh, Evangelist Newby and Mother Willis for their giving on today. We celebrate them and we acknowledge you. And we thank God for your gift. God bless you, Mother. Well, it's time to hear the word of the Lord. Anybody ready to hear a word from the Lord? Amen. I believe that there is a word from the Lord. And such a tremendous Christian gentleman uh, we have on the day really deserves uh, for us to share the length and breadth of this extensive uh, bio for the many experiences that he has had in leading and leadership both in and outside of Christendom and in the church, as particularly the Church of God in Christ. But in deference to time, uh, I'd like to refer you to your program to read the full and complete bio and just abbreviate our remarks because we want to hear a word from the Lord. And I'd like to ask this choir to get in place to give us a brief sermonic selection even as I speak. Uh, so that you can be in place and we're going to hear uh, a brief selection and we're going to receive a word from the Lord. We're excited tonight to welcome to the temple into Virginia first uh, the great Bishop Prince E.W. Bryant Sr. Come on, let's give God praise for him once more and again. Again, Bishop Bryant has been a source of support, a source of strength, a source of wisdom, uh, and we thank God for his leadership. Uh, 
uh, he was great friends with uh, my father, Bishop Ted G. Thomas Sr. Uh, in fact, he walked in and he hugged me and he said, the last time I was in this place, I was with your dad. And I said, well, uh, I'm, I'm only a show. He said, but I see him in you. <laughs> And I said, we're delighted to have him, and we're delighted to welcome him. Uh, I tell you the truth of the matter is, Bishop Bryant is a preacher's preacher. And uh, I've heard him preach on numerous occasions. Um, but I believe it was Convocation 2022, uh, where he preached the message that really, ah, my God. I'm still trying to get it together. I have to go and rewind it and look at it and get it again. That really is ingrained in my heart. Premature obituaries. And the Lord blessed us in that holy convocation. And I'm looking for a blessing tonight in this workers meeting. And so we would that you would pray and have your cups out and prepared to receive a word as it comes from one of the 12 apostles of the grand old church of God in Christ. I really consider him to be the, one of the fathers of our church. The Bishop Prince E.W. Bryant Sr. Receive ye him by resting on your feet after the choir comes with a brief sermonic selection.
say amen again. Amen. While we're standing tonight in the presence of God and his holy angels, let's just clap our hands and give him a thunderous round of applause. Come on. Come on, give him praise. Come on, give him praise. Oh, you ought to praise him. You ought to praise him. And give him glory. Come on, help me praise him. response to what he has already done. And if God has already done something for you, tell the Holy Ghost to keep your mind green. Tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. You ought to open your mouth and tell the Lord thank you. said when I think on the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done my soul cry hallelujah and then he said thank God for saving me the highest end of our praise is for our salvation thank God for saving me I don't know about you, but I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I'm saved. When I got saved, and I'm gonna date myself, Last year, Bishop Sheard came to Houston and helped me celebrate my 60th year as a Church of God in Christ minister. And, and I hasten to say, it's not that I'm so old. I just started so young. <laughs> But 60 years ago, when the Lord saved me and called me into the gospel ministry, the only thing I wanted to be was saved. And tonight, after 60 plus years, the only thing I want to be is saved. You may take your seat in the presence of God on this evening. What a joy, what a signature honor and a couple of privilege tonight for me to be here at historic first jurisdiction. As I stood here, I've I felt 
I feel some kind of way. I feel some kind of way. Um, the last time I was in this pulpit and in convocation, Bishop Ted Thomas presented me. Just a moment of reflection. Um, yes. You know, a friend is a gift that you give yourself. And Bishop Thomas and I was fast friends. We really were more like brothers. And he claimed my love and high regard. One of the great leaders of all times in our church. Sage, sage leader, sober leader. And yes, I want to thank God for Bishop Mark Thomas. Well, thank God for you, sir. Come on, let's celebrate him. Come on, give it up, give it up, give it up, give it up. Bishop Mark Thomas is a chip of the old block. <laughs> yeah, the, the same DNA that was in Bishop Ted Thomas flows through his veins. And then, having said that, he's a preacher, leader, server in his own right. In his own right. Yes, yes. I was one of the happiest preachers in the Church of God in Christ when Bishop, when at that time, Elder Mark Thomas became Bishop Mark Thomas of this jurisdiction. I was so happy. I don't know whether you heard me down in Texas shouting and cutting up or not <laughs> but I was happy for him because he followed close um, everywhere and Bishop Thomas trusted him and had confidence in him and, and so I continue to claim for him your love and respect and support for his leadership. Um, to Bishop Campbell, my fast friend, where, where is he? <laughs> I tell this story, he, he tells a different story. <laughs> We was all running for the general board in 2012. And one Sunday morning, Pastor Campbell showed up at my church in Houston. I said, you down here spying on me. <laughs> he and his lovely wife. And um, we love you, Bishop Campbell. And I was happy. I was happy that when the dust settled, that Bishop Campbell was still in this jurisdiction supporting him. And I'm happy that Administrative Assistant Eugene McCown is in this jurisdiction. He's a smart guy. <laughs> He's a smart guy. Yes. And to all of the Administrative Assistants, Gray and Hughes, and to a cadre of superintendents 
to Mother Towns tonight. God bless you, Mother. God bless you so much. And then, and then to First Lady Naomi. Oh, what a preacher, what a preacher. You got a word in you. Love to hear it. Love you so much. And then, of course, and then, of course, um, assistant supervisor. And the road, the road is long. <laughs> and to uh, administrative assistant Cooper and Nixon tonight, Virginia Third, Mother Judas Willis. <laughs> you know I love you, don't you? Yes, Mother Judas Willis. And to a dear friend of mine, and a, a very spiritual man, a dear friend of mine, um, he prayed for me. And I'm talking about Bishop G. Wesley Hardy. He's my friend. And Mother Hardy as well. You know we love you. We know we love you. And, and certainly, Bishop... Dwight Green, he's been to both of my churches in Houston, and uh, he's a longtime friend uh, of ours, and to all of the pastors and superintendents, superintendents, pastors, elders, missionaries, and saints assemble, thank you for this kind uh, and generous uh, invitation tonight to be a part of this historic jurisdiction. Well, briefly, tonight, let's go to the word of the Lord. There's a passage of scripture recorded in the book of Acts, the 28th chapter. Verse 1, and a few of the following verses. And it reads as follows. Well, I'm just going to read one verse. You can read the context of verses 1 through 5. And I will read 5, the fifth verse. And... He shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. I want to talk from this subject. Let the fire deal with it. You may be seated. This text covers Paul's journey from Palestine to Rome. Journeys like this and others have life applications. The text says... Adverse winds, storms, shipwrecks, snake bites. The sighted of Crete, that 27th chapter, verse 4 said, We sail under Crete because the winds were contrary. It skirted the islands. They were disappointed that they could not land on Crete. The places we cannot go and the thing that we cannot do may be the most significant entries in the log book of life. There are two kinds of regrets. There are action regrets and inaction regrets. Providence here, and I'm a providential person. I believe in the divine providence of God. 
the providence of God works even in storms. Here we have Paul really on an island in all possibilities that he would never have gone except by storm. Sometimes storms become our transportation. You rock it in. Divorce, toxic relationships, bad diagnosis, addictions, leadership challenges and false charges, character assassination, demonic assaults becomes our transportation. They had survived the terrible storm and shipwreck. 276 passengers were alive on an island called Malta. Verse 2 of the text says they received unexpected hospitality. Listen to it. The barbarians showed us unusual kindness. Let that marinate for a moment. The barbarians showed us unusual kindness. They built a fire. Paul didn't build the fire. The barbarians built the fire. Because they were wet and cold, the barbarians built the fire. What I want to press is this. The original fire was built by the barbarians. Yes. And the fire they built was dying out. Therefore, Paul gathered sticks and laid sticks on the fire to keep the fire burning. Proverbs 26 and 20 says, For lack of wood, the fire goeth out. Paul, Paul didn't need to start a new fire. Let me help somebody. I said, Paul did not need to start a new fire. What Paul needed to do and did was to kindle the fire that was already burning. We don't need to start a lot of new fire. But we do need to feed the fire that others have started. Yes. Folks saying that the, the church of God in Christ fire is going out. Some said it has gone out. The problem isn't that the fire has gone out. The problem is that we do not have enough people that are willing to feed the fire. Our forefathers and our predecessors started a great fire in 1906 called the Church of God in Christ. And if they started it, we ought to be able to keep it burning. Some men are great by what they originate. Others are great by what they continue. 
Many of us will never be originators of the fire. But we show enough. Is that a word? <laughs> Can feed the fire and keep it going. It's interesting here that the serpent came out of the wood. The viper was hidden in the sticks. Repeat after me. The, the viper was hidden in the sticks. The sticks are the material. Sticks are the personnel. Sticks are the people we use to kindle, to fuel our organization and our ministries. But the fire revealed the serpent in the sticks. You see, there are serpents in the sticks. So we must te test our sticks. Our sticks must be tried by fire. Our personnel, our staff <laughs> must be fire tested. It's interesting to me that the, the area of the attack was the hand. Uh, Ephesians 4, 8 and 11 talks about the fivefold ministry and it's, it's characterized as the hand. The apostles, the thumb. And the, the apostle is the only, well, the thumb is the only finger that can touch all other fingers. The prophet is the index finger. It points. Evangelist, y'all hit me with this, is the longest finger. I just leave it like that. The pastor is the ring finger because he's married to the church. And the teacher is the picky finger. It's the smallest finger because teaching is the smallest thing we do. When the snake came out of the fire and latched onto Paul's hand, literally bit his hand, hanging on to his hand. He had to shake him off of his hand. When the natives saw this, they watched Paul for a long time to see whether he would get sick and die. Because they had seen this before. They would seen this viper before. They would seen him bite people before and they waited in anticipation and expectation for Paul to swell and die. But he didn't die. The truth of it is he didn't get sick. He didn't swell. He didn't die. He was a ace in the hole. I call this viper ace in the hole because uh, the storm was a natural occurrence. Paul had been through three storms. So that's a natural occurrence is something that you can expect. 
But the serpent was an unnatural occurrence, something that you didn't expect to happen. Let me prophesy. There are going to be some things, there are going to be some unexpected things coming into your future that you never thought would happen. And they're coming to catch you off guard. But you won't die. Paul didn't die. He defied expectations of the natives. He quoted Psalms 118 and 17. I shall not die. But live and declare the works of the Lord. If there's one thing that's missing in today's church, and that is the ability to shake off the serpent. I believe this. I believe that God is going to raise up a generation that is immune to snake bite. That can take a death blow and not swell. Take a death blow and not die. The text says, that Paul shook the serpent off, you got to get it right now, in the fire. You have to be careful, my brothers, even as Paul was, to shake the serpent off in the fire and let the fire deal with it. As I, as I continue in ministry, I'm discovering that some things I do not have to deal with. And there are some things that I'm not going to deal with. I'm going to let the fire deal with it. Well, let's see. Abraham said this in Genesis 19 and 24. I'm not going to deal with these sodomites. <laughs> Down in Sodom and Gomorrah. The Bible said, then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone. And fire from the Lord out of heaven. Moses said in Exodus 9, 24, I'm not going to deal with Nadab and Abiram. <laughs> he went on to say in Numbers 16 and 35, I'm not going to deal with rebellious Korah. I'm going to let the fire deal with it. Paul said, I'm not going to deal with your status in the church. Some of you are saying that your gold and silver, precious stone, Wood, stubble, or hay, I'm not going to deal with that. I'm going to let the fire deal with it. Because 
every man's work shall be tried by fire. The fallen world, Satan himself, will be dealt with by fire. The storm fell. I got to leave you. I've been with you too long. I got to leave you. The storm fell. The viper fell. And uh, the takeaway from that is that God will give you a temporary immortality. Until your work is done. There are some things that the storm can't do. There are some things that the shipwreck can't do. There are some things that the serpent can't do. Until your work is done. I hear Paul, I hear David said, the Lord is... I'm going to make a quick little run, but don't run with me. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Who shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foe, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell, though in horse should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should arise, in this will I be comforted. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after. The devil tried to drown them, but they came up out of the sea. The devil tried to freeze them, but they built a fire. The devil tried to attack him, but he shook it off into the fire. Oh, Lord. Yes, I got to leave you. I've been with you too long. One thing I like about Jesus, he is, oh, he is the author in the finisher of our faith. And that simply means that whatever he starts, he will finish. No storm, no shipwreck. No venomous serpent, yes, shall come against us. Thank you, Lord. If you're going to make it to Rome, you're going to have to shake off some things. And every serpent that has bitten you, that has bitten your family, that has bitten your marriage, that has bitten your ministry, shall be shaken off into the fire. Tell the Lord thank you. Come on, tell him thank you. Yes. Yes, Lord. The story goes that God won't remove the serpent. No, 
He didn't remove them from the Garden of Eden. He didn't remove them from the wilderness. And he won't move them from our world. But I got some good news. I hear in Genesis about another serpent. He said the serpent was more subtle than all of the beasts of the field. He said, I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. And it shall bruise thy head and they shall bruise his heel. A bruised heel is temporary, but a bruised head is permanent. Yes, I don't cavalry. Jesus brewed the heel, his heel, but it brewed the serpent's head. Died a redemptive death. Died a vicarious death. Died a substitutionary death. Locked his head in his shoulders. Gave up the ghost and said, Father, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Isn't that right? Died. Mm -hmm. Died on the cross. Took him down from the cross and put him in a grave and rolled a stone up against the grave. A round, huge stone weighing a ton, like a period at the end of a sentence. Yes, stayed in the grave three long days, but Allah, oh, Allah, sun the moon got up from the grave. All power in heaven and in earth is in my hand. Power to save and heal. Power to deliver. Let the fire deal with it. I've said enough. Everybody standing. Thank you for hearers and the promise attached that your word once gone out would not return void but would accomplish the purpose to which it was sent. Allow your word tonight to accomplish its divine purpose. 
in the life of every hero. In Jesus' name. Let me search the house for a moment. There may be some person present both in person or in our virtual audience that have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord. If you're here tonight and desire to be saved, I got some good news. You can leave this workers' meeting forgiven of all of your sins. This is a time of judgment and transparency. If you desire to be saved, just raise your hand. If you in our virtual audience, I can't see your hand, but God can see your heart. Repeat this simple prayer with me. Lord Jesus, forgive me of all of my sins and for the wrong that I've done and for the wrong that I am. And I invite you right now into my heart and life to be my Lord and Savior. Amen. Come on, let's praise God for those who may have accepted Jesus. Before I take my seat tonight, I want to, I want to be a blessing to this jurisdiction. I understand the weight and the burden, both natural and spiritual, on the leader and leaders, the economic burden. I'm going to ask the pastors and elders, the missionaries and saints, we understand, I understand that most and I think you will agree with me, most of the money that's raised in these sittings come from up here and down here. And the women department, even though the congregation outnumbers us, but the lounge share of the revenue generated comes from clergy and credential holders. But I'm gonna ask everyone, I need about 30 or 35 persons tonight to just share $100 with me. Just said, Bishop Bryant, I'm going to join you. I'm giving $100 as well. I'm going to join you tonight in this offering. And then I want you to bring it up bring it on up. Let's do this. Let's, let's take your business. Would you do that? Would you do that? You that would do that, would you come now? If that's in your power to do, just lay it on the altar. Just lay it on the altar before the Lord. If that's in your power to do, and I believe it is. Come right now. Some are giving elect. Thank you, Mother. Electronically. Thank you so much. We can do this. We can. We can do this. That when Sunday come, all. Bills are paid. And I would like to say, let's have a surplus. What y'all say? Let's have a surplus. Come, brothers. If you can. If you cannot do that, then get the best gift that you can give. And that means everybody. Everybody can give something. 
If you have something, we had a superintendent in Houston years ago named D. Duncan. He was, if you have something, you have something what to give. Have everyone given? Whatever your gift is, would you bring it now? Whatever your gift is, would you bring it now? Whatever your gift is, my brothers and sisters, come. Thank you so much. Everybody have something. Repeat after me, everybody can beat zero. Thank you. Everybody can beat zero. The credit card machine is to my right. Thank you so much, daughter. Oh God, we thank you. We we bless you, we praise you. We give you glory. Thank you, brothers. This is what we do. This is what we do. Saints all over the nation, this week, last week, and the ensuing weeks, we'll be coming together in fellowship. Christian training and supporting the work of the Lord paying that credential holders reports making district reports supporting that leader I've been blessed with a wonderful jurisdiction that takes good care of me financially. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, folk that push my offering and see to it that it has a certain level. Isn't that a blessing? Because they want their leader to look good. not be doing this <laughs> during offering time. Yeah. Listen, brothers, I understand. It was a long time before I could give $100 and didn't need it. <laughs> it was a long time. It was a long time. But I wanted to do that. I asked God. I, I, I would see those progressive pastors in the convocation workers meeting giving $100 and I didn't have it. I said, Lord, I, I want to be able to give like that. And God blessed me. I remember I remember the first time I could give $100. I was the happiest guy in the line. Now they ask for 10000 at a time. Convocation last year, the first offering was want all the general board members to give ten thousand. I said, "Haba, haba, 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 I just got on the board. Haba, haba, haba. Say amen. Father, we thank you for these wonderful leaders in this great jurisdiction and visiting bishops, the great women of this jurisdiction that undergird their lead and undergird the work of the Lord, not only with their presence, but with their finances and moral support and influence. I speak blessings and favor upon their life that make it rich and added no sorrow. I ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. And now, let the weak Say I am strong Let the poor say I am rich Because of what the Lord has done Come on, help me sing it right quick Oh, and I Let the weak am 
give God thanks tonight. Come on, what a word we received from our general board member, Bishop Prince E.W. Bryan. Come on, let's praise the Lord for the word of God. Let the fire deal with it. Let the fire deal with it. Bishop Green is going to come. We certainly appreciate again all of our friends that have come to fellowship with us on tonight. I saw Superintendent Newby. I missed him earlier but let me just praise God for him come on let's bless the Lord for him amen thankful for your being here Bishop Dwight Green is going to come he's going to give us amen the benediction on tonight let us all stand and we thank God for that most spirited presentation of the word of God to encourage us tonight the fire can consume it, whatever is against you. I was just sitting there thinking that when God sent the Azusa Street revival, he had us in mind. And we don't need to let the flame of Pentecostal holiness ever leave this world. So as we pray this benediction, Holy Father, in the name of Jesus, you have called us to be your peculiar, unique treasure that we will go throughout the world and let men, women know of the saving power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Evidence has been in this place this week. You have sat down in this place and people have been delivered, people have been strengthened, people have been encouraged, people have been renewed. Now, as we go from this place tonight, let the testimonies of the saints be that I'm reassured that what I'm facing right now, the fire will take care of it. You promised us in this season that an open door would be granted to the saints of God. And that open door, no man can shut. Father, in the name of Jesus, let us awaken tomorrow to the benefits that's on the other side of the door. In the name of the Father, the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. And on Sunday, let a special anointing Set down on your servant and every heart that will be open to the words that he will preach. Let them be blessed in a miraculous way is our benediction for this evening in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Shake somebody in the hand and say, God bless you real good.